Hello, Internet. This is Sir Vancelot with ATH. Initially, I was going to do a review series of the first few Toho games. I recorded footage, wrote a script, and practiced with software, but I had to install Windows 7 64-bit to take advantage of more RAM, and I lost my motivation to finish it. I do plan to restart work on it in the future, but for now, I want to talk about something I'm much more familiar with and a big fan of, the Vocaloids. The Vocaloids are a worldwide phenomenon that has exploded in recent years, and I've been a big fan since 2007. So I thought I'd make a video about them as a creative exercise and to familiarize myself with the video production process. If you're not a fan of Japanese music, you might not be too familiar with what the Vocaloids are. So what is a Vocaloid? Let me give you a hypothetical. You and your friends are decent musicians, and you want to form a band. You have a drummer, a guitarist, a bassist, and someone who's good on the keyboards. All you need is a vocalist. But you don't know anyone who can sing. You can't sing, your friends can't sing, and your enemies can't sing. But what if you could get a computer to sing for you? It's a neat idea, but it sounds pretty optimistic. After all, if you're my age, you're probably familiar with computer voices as sounding like Microsoft Sam. Who'd want to make music with him? When I was young, I had dreams to get better things. Platinum prong inputs and a high def screen. I hooked up with Bill Gates and we dropped catalysts, took the cash to the streets. And okay, the other than this guy. Well, let's just say technology has improved a little bit from the likes of Microsoft Sam. So here is a video series on the extensive, and I think interesting, history of the Vocaloid franchise. Before I begin though, I need to preface this by saying that I am not an expert on the Vocaloids. I'm not a part of the fandom, and I'm not a musician, I'm just a big fan. I'm getting most of this information from the Vocaloid wiki, so thank you to the people who keep that updated. I'm basically summarizing the information on the wiki. Also, while the majority of the Vocaloids and Vocaloid-based music is Japanese, this series is about showcasing each of the Vocaloids' different attributes and styles and their impact on voice synthesizer technology and its appeal. Several of them sing in English and other languages, so if you're interested at all in voice synthesis, I think you'll enjoy this series even if you're not into anime or Japanese culture. And it will indeed be a series. There is a lot of information to cover. In the year 2000, a Japanese man named Kenmochi Hideki was working with a group of people at the Pompo Fabra University in Barcelona, Spain, together with the Yamaha Corporation. He had a concept for a voice synthesis software which would take recordings of human voices and split up the syllables in such a way that they could later be played back in any way the user wanted, allowing for adjustments in pitch and other modifications. In January 2004, the fruits of his team's labors were two singing androids, vocaloids as it were, Leon and Lola. Released at the same time, they were advertised to professional musicians in electronic magazines and on the internet, which was standard for voice synthesizers at the time. According to Ken Mochi, his original concept for the vocaloids did not include commercial sales, but Yamaha realized the potential for business. Though there are no official records, it's believed that Leon and Lola sold at least 1,000 copies each because it was the minimum to be considered a success at the market in the market at the time. What is interesting about Leon and Lola is that even though they were the brainchild of a Japanese man working with Spaniards, their voice banks are in English. That is, they sing in English. And while they were not considered failures by the Vocaloid developers, they did not become very popular. The intended market for them was America, primarily, and they were sold as soul music singers. They have very deep voices and a rather un-American accent, and that just didn't fit in with the popular music scene in 2004. That's what I'm counting on 
I used to want to date, but now you I only want to love. Crashing down, oh you wouldn't understand Or oh, just how I feel I'm at my breaking point and I'm a burn it down Some other interesting things about Leon and Lola are that their voice providers' identities have never been revealed and their box art is made up of stock images. Having anonymous providers is not uncommon with Vocaloids, but the fact that they are both anonymous implies that this was intentional from the start. As for the box art, having stock photos is not too special. But since neither Leon nor Lola have been updated since release, these are some of the only Vocaloids with absolutely no official appearance or character traits apart from their genders. In the West, this would be considered an insignificant point. They're just voice synthesizers, right? Though Leon and Lola were not huge successes, a third piece of Vocaloid software was released soon after them. In 2004, Miriam was released in the UK. Miriam's voice provider is a British South African singer named Miriam Stockley, who is the singer for a group named Ademus. She was a large improvement over Leon and Lola. Miriam's software was almost identical to them, but the recording process was much more detailed and refined, resulting in her being a step above in terms of general quality and ease of use for the end users. She was also created and marketed as a general use voice bank, rather than being genre specific as Leon and Lola were. While Miriam was not the first Vocaloid to have her voice revealed to the public, that honor goes to the next Vocaloid I'll talk about, Miriam was the first to have a live performance. She performed in Novosibirsk, Russia, the day after Christmas in 2004, singing the song Sad Mondays with live musicians. With a great sounding voice and numerous improvements, Miriam should have done very well. Unfortunately, there was a hitch. Around the same time as Miriam's release, the company Viersen released a rival program to Vocaloid called Cantor, which was advertised in the UK at the same time as Miriam. Though Cantor and Vocaloid were both voice synthesis softwares, they had very different goals and methods. 
Cantor did not rely on voice samples from singers, and it was never intended to create realistic sounding voices. Even so, it offered dozens of different voices compared to the one offered by Vocaloid packages, and the software had a simpler, more friendly interface with better tools for tuning sound. Cantor ultimately did not do very well, in part because of its high price point, but it did affect Miriam sales. After a while, the company that produced and distributed Leon, Lola, and Miriam, known as Zero G Limited, stopped selling the Vocaloids because of a lack of public interest. The Vocaloid project could have died right there, in obscurity, but there was something happening on the other side of the world. In 2003, a music CD known as History of Logic System was released in Japan featuring a song with prototype versions of two Japanese Vocaloids. On November 5, 2004, the first of these Vocaloids, named Meiko, was released in Japan by Krypton Future Media. Meiko is the first of the Japanese Vocaloids and is also the first to have a character design on her cover. She beat all expectations and sold over 3,000 copies in her first year, despite the tight recording schedule and the rush to release. A year later, a male counterpart to Meiko was released named Kaito. Meiko and Kaito were developed at the same time, but for some reason Meiko's release was pushed ahead of Kaito's. Both of these Japanese Vocaloids were developed to be versatile and to work well with many music genres, but Kaito did not fare as well as Meiko. Despite his one extra year of refinement, and despite Kaito being relatively easier to use than Meiko, he did very poorly commercially, selling only around 500 copies. Kaito was the first commercial failure of the Vocaloid Enterprise, and this resulted in a large number of changes in the plans for the future of the franchise.
Meiko is named for her voice provider, Haigo Meiko. Kaito's voice provider is Fuga Naoto. The name Kaito was taken from a public suggestion, in part because it was easy for, to pronounce for foreigners. Like Leon and Lola, Meiko and Kaito were intended to be seen as a complementary pair, even though their release dates were a year apart. But because Meiko did six times as well as Kaito, Krypton Future Media figured that the Japanese marketplace had no room in its heart for male vocaloids, and Kaito would be the last male vocaloid for several years. Even with Meiko's relative success, it's important to understand that up to this point, all vocaloids, both the Zero-G and Krypton Future Media voice banks, were intended to be used by professional, tech-savvy musicians, and so the market was relatively small, regardless of the region. Additionally, though Meiko and Kaito were both Japanese singers for the Japanese market, the Vocaloid software was developed in English. This meant that the interface for the Japanese Vocaloids was not very intuitive for Japanese musicians, which contributed to their lack of popularity. Kaito may have failed to meet expectations, but Meiko's success gave the development team hope for the future, and they kept working. Three years after the fall of Leon, Lola, and Miriam, the Western world made another attempt at the Vocaloid concept. Developed by the Swedish company Power PowerFX, an Australian singer known only by the name of Jody lent her voice to the first Vocaloid to be based on Yamaha's Vocaloid 2 version of the software, Sweet Anne, who was released June 29, 2007. As an interesting side note, the guys at Power PowerFX were actually introduced to the Vocaloid software when they saw Leon and Lola demonstrated at a National Association of Music Merchants trade show. As for Sweet Anne herself, I hesitate to show her box art because it's, well... Sweet Anne's name is based on where she is from, Sweden, and she was actually advertised as a space lounge robo-vocalist sensation. Her box art character design was based on the Bride of Frankenstein, of all things. Swedes, man, they're kind of weird.
Sweet Anne was an impressive improvement over the first generation English Vocaloids, in large part because of the new software. Vocaloids engine was now 2.0, and that made it much easier to use, and it produced much clearer voices without as much need for the user to edit and tweak them manually. Sweet Anne was still targeted at professionals, and she did pretty well. She received some good promotional material, having a MySpace page created for her to share samples of her music there and on YouTube, and her sweet voice sounded very pleasant and realistic in the hands of a good musician. But despite her small success, interest in English Vocaloids in the West waned for a while. Vocaloid 2 was still new and relatively untested. Sweet Anne was a good start, but her release was pushed before sufficient testing could be done, so she was far from perfect. This is the end of the first video in my series. I know it's a bit on the long side, but I wanted to include examples of each Vocaloid. I did not pick the songs based on popularity, they're simply what I found and what I thought would show each Vocaloid's range. I highly recommend looking for more videos yourself. These first generation Vocaloids are not used very often, but they planted the seeds for a music revolution. Next time, we'll get to the beginning of the second generation Vocaloids, and they will show how brightly a simple concept like a singing computer can shine. Thanks for watching.